Chair recognizes Ms. Mays from South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Comer. Um, first of all, my first question is who bribed Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the Oversight Committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and- M Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, um, if the, the lady recognized, if, if, the general, if the general lady Let's wants to hear from things. Hunter Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. And Chairman. Let's take a vote and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why, order, why order, are order. Are, order. Women are, are women allowed to speak in here or no? Are women allowed to speak in here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I, I'll interrupt the you chairman. I don't know that he's a lady. I think that that Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. Our nation is founded on the rule of come law. Come on, come on. And the premise come that on. the law applies to equally to everyone, no oh, oh. matter what your last name is. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Point of it order. It doesn't matter who you are. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Biggs over Donald here. Donald Trump Jr. Biggs over here. Uh, state your point, Mr. Biggs. Yeah, my, my point of order is this. Are we going to continue on with, with this blatant interruption? It, this, this is absurd and inappropriate. I intend to give my statement. I don't intend to have anybody interrupt it. Uh, I'm not going to interrupt your statements. I think you should have decorum and courtesy and don't act like a bunch of nimrods. You just uh, interrupted a woman. And, and that's five. Uh, you know, I got, I got we, permission. Can we I agree? Did, Everyone has Mr. five Chairman, minutes. Can we agree? Point, point of order again. The assertion that I interrupted was absolutely false. That's typical of the gentleman who spoke it. I got permission to speak from the chairman. I spoke. I was interrupted yet again right. by the gentleman who doesn't choose to go through the chair and follow proper order. I encourage us, I, I, I think if we're going to have any respect at all, we need to have proper decorum. Well, you're well said, well said. I'd like to finish. The rules are everyone's going to be recognized for five minutes. Anyone that wants to be recognized will be recognized for five minutes. Ms. Mace has four minutes and 13 seconds left. Chair recognizes Miss May. It does not matter who you are, where you come from, or who your father is, or your last name. Yes, I'm looking at you, Hunter Biden, as I'm speaking to you. You are not above the law at all. The facts in this case are crystal clear. This committee used and issued a lawful subpoena to Hunter Biden, a critical witness in this committee's investigation into Biden family corruption. Hunter Biden and his lawyers did not claim privilege of any kind because clearly he has none. They didn't contest the legitimacy of our reasons for issuing this subpoena, no reasons, because they clearly are legitimate. And yet, he refused to comply. Uh, Trump's family members, Don Trump Jr., he, uh, he did not defy a congressional subpoena. He showed up multiple times for multiple depositions for several hours. Um, in doing so, you know, Hunter Biden broke the law. He did so deliberately. You did so flagrantly. You showed up on the Hill, on the Senate side, the day of that congressional subpoena to defy it and spit in the face of this committee. That's what you did. The question the American people are asking us is, what is Hunter Biden so afraid of? Why can't you show up for a, d a congressional deposition? You're here for a political stunt. This is just a PR stunt to you. This is just a game that you are playing with the American people. You're playing with the truth. Um, Hunter Biden wasn't afraid to sell access to Joe Biden to the highest bidder when he was in elected office. He wasn't afraid to trade on the Biden brand, peddle influence, and share those ill-gotten gains with members of, of his family, including Joe Biden. He wasn't afraid to compromise the integrity of the presidency and vice presidency by involving Joe Biden in shady business deals with our foreign adversaries. But Hunter Biden, you were too afraid to show up for a deposition. And you still can't today. Um, I believe that Hunter Biden should be held completely in contempt. I think he should be hauled off to jail right now because it wasn't long ago, two of my friends on the other side of the aisle, um, that you also believed in the, the power of a congressional subpoena. Not long ago at all. You believed in holding those who refused to comply with a congressional subpoena accountable. And I stood with each and every one of you. I am the only member in this room today who has held a member of my own party in contempt of Congress for not showing up for a subpoena. And I see nothing but complete hypocrisy on the other side of the aisle. The ranking member of this committee even so eloquently put it, the lesson is please tell your children out there in America, if you get a subpoena to go before Congress, go. You have a legal responsibility to do so. 
So the hypocrisy is stunning. What are we to tell our children today? There's nothing the other side can say with a straight face. As the only member of this committee to vote to hold a member of contempt of my own party, let me be clear, this should not be a partisan issue. If Congress issues a subpoena, you show up, period. This is not a responsibility we take lightly. It brings no joy for us to do this, but the president's <laughs> son broke the law and must be held accountable in the same way anybody else mm. would. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to do so. And my last message to you, Hunter Biden, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And will the gentle lady him. yield for a question? Will the gentle lady yield? Will my friend yield from South Carolina? Sure. Um, I, I do want to commend the gentle lady who was the only Republican who stood up uh, and voted to hold in contempt the Republican members of the House who blatantly and categorically refused to comply with subpoenas that came from the bipartisan January 6th committee. I would like to ask my friend, Ms. Mace from South Carolina, um, whether she's aware of all the case law which says that the committee has to engage in good faith interaction with the witnesses they've called and they're supposed to arrive at a solution. And what do you think about the fact that the chairman on multiple occasions gave this witness the opportunity to come before the full committee and he agreed to that? We issued a congressional subpoena and I know with your constitutional law background, you know exactly what that means and he should have showed up and because of your vote and because of your statements, you should be voting to hold, hold this man in contempt of Congress today, right now, if you're gonna be consistent on your own policies and your own words. Gentlelady's time's expired. Chair, recognize Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to see you after a long break. So I'm listening to the gentlelady from South Carolina about the witness being afraid to come in front of the committee. It's interesting. He's here. He doesn't seem to be too afraid. In fact, for some reason, the chairman, who on multiple occasions invited the witness to come on TV, Apparently the chairman wants to pretend like his statements on television or in interviews don't matter, but it didn't happen once, it didn't happen twice, it happened multiple times. The chairman said the witness can choose whether to come to a deposition or to a public hearing in front of the committee. The witness accepted the chairman's invitation. It just so happens the witness is here. If the committee wants to hear from the witness, and the chairman gave the witness that option, then the only folks that are afraid to hear from the witness with the American people watching are my friends on the other side of the aisle. I don't know if there's a proper motion, Mr. Chairman, but I'll make a motion, let's vote. Let's take a vote. Who wants to hear from Hunter right now, today? Anyone? Come on, who wants to hear from Hunter? The motion's out of order. Yeah. No one. So I'm a visual learner, and the visual is clear. Nobody over there wants to hear from the witness. Oh, there's one. Thank you. Will you yield for a question? I'm not there yet, but I will eventually. Uh, so there's no one, well, other than one or two, that want to hear from the witness. So the majority of my colleagues over there, including the chairman, don't want to hear from the witness with the American people watching. So. Mr. Chairman, are, I, I just want to hear from you. Will you acknowledge that you invited the witness on television to choose whether he could come to a public hearing? And do you stand by your words or do you renege that invitation to the witness? To answer the question I've said repeatedly, the, after the deposition, Mr. Biden can come in front of a public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to play the video, but that is not what you said on television multiple times. Uh, we have the quotes. We can put them up. You said the witness can choose between a deposition Listen, or... Mr. Moskowitz, Mr. Biden doesn't make the rules. We make the no, rules. That, no, Mr. Chairman, you make the rules. And the rule you made is that he can choose. I, that, those, the rule is... Those were your, those were your words. Reclaiming we, my time. He was issued two re lawful subpoenas. Re reclaiming my time, Mr. Chairman. No, you issued right. those subpoenas after he took you up on your invitation to come 
And then you were like, oh, no, no, oh, my God, what did, we, what did I do? I invited him to come so the American people can hear his side of the story. I put my foot in my mouth, so now I must bury him in the basement where we can decide what we're going to release to the public so that we can continue to tell that story. Mr. Chairman, you have said multiple times that this is not about Hunter. It's about Joe Biden. And even this morning on Mornings with Maria, she asked another simple question, the question you have been asked multiple times, which is, do you have evidence to impeach the President of the United States? Before, you said, I hope so. Today, you said, I think so. And the answer is, you don't. And you still don't. And so we continue to be here and have these charades. To my colleagues who talk about lawful subpoenas, I appreciate the gentle ladies the general lady from South Carolina who voted to, to hold people in contempt. Listen, I'll, I'll make this bipartisan. I'll vote for the Hunter contempt today. You can get my vote. You can get my vote. But I want you to show the American people that you're serious. Here is the subpoena to Representative Scott Perry, who did not comply. I'd like to enter this into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mark Meadows. I'd like to enter this into the record, who did not comply. Here is the subpoena to Jim Jordan who did not comply with a lawful subpoena. I'd like to enter that into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mo Brooks, who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mr. Biggs, who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. And here's the subpoena to Mr. McCarthy, who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. There's an amendment coming to add some of those names into the contempt order. You vote to add those names and show the American people that we apply the law equally, not just when it's Democrats, right? It's a crime when it's Democrats, but when it's Trump and the Republicans, it's just fine. No, show that you're serious and that everyone is not above the law. Vote for that amendment, and I'll vote for the Hunter Biden contempt. I yield back. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, recognize Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, apparently, you're afraid of my words. Uh, here goes. <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. And this is also a coward.